On today's mini days, I'm going to be restoring this little old ottoman with completely broken seat. I mean, it's completely, it would fall in if you sat on it, basically. And I'm going to make it look like this. Welcome back to my channel, mini days. So to start with, I'm using a tack lifter and a pair of pliers to remove the braid and all of the fabric from the ottoman. Next, I've removed the handles and multiple layers of fabric. This thin board is literally what was supporting the seat, so I'm not surprised it's caved in. I'm sure originally it would have been strapped. Next, I gave the ottoman a good wash down with sugar soap and let it dry. Next, I'm using a Rust-Oleum Chalky Finish Furniture Paint and I'm going to use this large round brush head to apply. I love this brush so much, the paint goes on super fast. I've had people ask me if video has been speeded up and no it hasn't. <laughs> this is literally how quick it is to use this brush. And you can use it on all different surfaces so you don't have to keep switching brushes. I will leave a link below for the paint, the brush and actually all of the equipment that I've used for this video. So as you can see, it just glides over the rattan um, and yeah, you don't really even have to stipple it. It just seems to all automatically kind of get it in all of the gaps. Now when you paint and rattan, um, one thing you have to really do is just make sure you quickly brush over the opposite side, like the inside of the, of the chest, because sometimes the paint can bleed through. Um, it didn't really happen with me today with this, but... I just gave it a quick going over anyway. I mean, I was painting the inside anyway. So after three coats of paint had dried, it was then time to create some kind of stable and um, base for the seating area. So I'm using this webbing and these sharp scissors and my good old staple gun. I've never been known for my cautious side. You should know that I'm well away. I don't want anything left untried Will you come with me, mon chair? So let us just do my love And not stop thinking of this over So let us just do my love And see where this road Next, I'm weaving a couple of lengths through in the opposite direction, just creating like a crisscross design. For the next step, I'm going to use this two inch thick foam. So I'm just positioning the corner on here. So I only have to cut two sides and I'm just going to go underneath, just put a bit of weight on there, underneath with a felt tip pen and I'm just going to mark exactly where I need to cut. Then I'm just going to use a bread knife to cut out this section. Next, I place the foam on top of the strapping and then I've just laid my fabric on and I'm just making sure it's nice and straight. Then I'm just trimming off exactly how much I need. Look at this cheeky little one in my fabric. <laughs> so I'm starting with one of the longer sides first and then I'm just stapling the fabric round to the inside, going all the way along. Then I'm stapling on the fabric round to the two shorter ends. Then I'm just putting a little staple in the side here, just so that it keeps everything in place for when I pull the corner around, and then staple underneath. 
So I'm doing this with both of the front corners. So as you can see the back is still completely open and I've cut some little slits in here going up to roughly where the hinges start. So next I'm going to push this middle section of the fabric through the gap and then through the other side and then I'm just going to staple this inside. And then next I'm going to fold round, just like I did with the front corners, the two back side corners. Next, for the final part, I am just making sure I've got enough length over these hinges so I can just fold it back on itself and then glue it on. So I'm just trimming it just with a spare kind of inch or so. And then I'm just applying some glue. I'd usually use fabric glue, but I've only got PV handy, so I've used this and it seems to work fine. So I'm just putting plenty of glue on the fabric, just let it soak in a little bit. Then I'm just using a skewer to kind of manoeuvre it into place. Then one last job, I am just going around the inside of the lid and I'm just trimming off any extra material just to make it look neater. I'm using my upholstery hammer just to tap in any um, kind of... Uh, staples that haven't gone in probably um, and just basically tidying up and that is it all finished I'm really happy with how it's turned out and um, the fact that it's got such a like square nice firm top fits in really well with our sofa bed so I'm using it as like a bit of an end table so it's really handy to store things in because we're always short of space in this room just a reminder this is what it looked like only a few hours ago and then thanks to quick dry and rust -oleum paint, I was able to do this project over the course of about 3-4 hours. Don't forget you can read more about this and my other DIYs over at my blog minidays.com. I'll leave a link in the description box to below to where you can get this gorgeous tick and stripe fabric. It's just so nice to work with. It's been such a beautiful light day today. It's been snowing outside and as you can see the dogs enjoying the, the sun rays shining in the wind in the window there. But one last thing I forgot to show you. I just tied a little beaded heart on the side here. Um, I just thought it looked quite sweet. This little dog needs a walk. Let us see if it's still snowing outside. Is it still snowing outside? Just take a look through this window. Hmm, there's not much snow on the ground at all. There's some of the hills in the distance, but the sheep seem to look a lot happier now. Hmm, yeah, maybe we'll go out. Yeah, let's head out for a walk. It's not that you're timid, no one could say, choosing to walk with the gale. What shall we call us? Thank you for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed it. So bye for now and I'll see you next week.